Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a concept known as Luminous Red Nova. Now what you're seeing right here is actually a supernova but because it's red I wanted to start with this because it kind of does look like something that we'll be talking about today. So hopefully you learned something from this video and welcome to What The Man. <laughs> So what exactly is a luminous red nova? Well, it's something that's not as bright and not as powerful as a supernova, but something that is a little bit more powerful and a little bit more bright than a nova. Now, I've talked about nova in a previous video, and that's essentially when um, a white dwarf starts absorbing some of the mass from a very large partner, specifically usually a red giant star. And as it absorbs this mass, it accumulates it on the surface, which we're going to try to create right here by adding a few rings somewhere around here. And eventually all of this mass will uh, sort of reach a critical mass um, when it sort of just explodes and creates what's known as um, Nova, which I'm going to try to generate right here using the pulses. So it creates a Nova that basically brightens the star for a time being. A supernova is a little bit different in that it's basically an explosion of a star, whether it reaches a critical mass or uh, becomes really old and cannot handle itself anymore and goes boom. So in this case, this is a supernova, a very, very bright event. So what exactly is a luminous red nova? Well, we don't actually have a simulation that shows you that here, but I'm going to explain it to you from scratch. We're going to basically visualize it as it happens. And this is a phenomenon we've discovered maybe not so long ago, back in 2002, or maybe a little bit earlier, but it hasn't actually been confirmed until very recently. And this is what it really is. So let's actually just pick two random stars and we're going to place them as partners. Let's just choose Aldebaran and um, let's go for something a little bit different. Like, let's go for Alfred. They kind of look similar. We're going to place them as a binary and they're going to start orbiting around one another. Now, any binary system uh, usually has a lot of interaction. So sometimes one star becomes older sooner, sometimes one star goes supernova, but sometimes something else might occur. Because um, of their shape, especially if they're very massive, they might start getting egg-shaped. They basically are not perfect spheres. And uh, this creates a lot of sort of interaction in terms of gravitation, and at some point they start getting closer and closer together. This uh, happens to many different objects in, uh, in the universe, but when this happens to two stars, at some point, as you can imagine, they might start getting closer and closer to the point where they actually essentially collide with one another. And this is what's going to happen when they do collide. So let's actually try this again. We're going to erase this for now. We're going to do this a little bit slower. And we're just going to have two suns orbit around one another and uh, play with their orbital parameters just a little bit here. And essentially, so here we go. We have two suns orbiting around one another. Uh, this is a typical binary system, there's quite a lot of them out there, but at some point one of these stars, or I guess both of them, will start kind of getting closer, and when this occurs, we're actually going to slow down time just a little bit, when this occurs, this is what happens, they initiate a nova or I guess a supernova, or basically a very large explosion. But this explosion is very different from supernova and from a nova. This is what we refer to as a red luminous nova. And we observed this at least a couple of times in our own galaxy. We've seen it in Andromeda galaxy as well, and we've actually even seen it in other galaxies. And they all seem to have very similar parameters. So first of all, they have a lot of infrared light. There's a lot of, a lot of red light that comes off uh, these uh, types of nova, these types of explosions. And this will usually last for at least a few weeks, maybe even a few months, and it's usually really, really red in color. It does become uh, dimmer and redder with time, so as the time progresses, this will actually become even more red. But as the visible light disappears, it actually becomes more and more prominent in the infrared spectrum, so it becomes easier to see in the infrared. Which is why it's actually a very different type of explosion from both Nova and Supernova, because it doesn't have a lot of X-rays, or as a matter of fact, it doesn't have any X-rays. It doesn't have any other um, highly energetic um, particles or energy coming out of it, but it does have a lot of infrared and it's super red in color. But on top of all of this, uh, at the end of all of this explosion, there's also a star that's left in the middle. So in this case, we have uh, a beautiful sun that's left. 
And one of the most cases and one of the most famous examples of this particular phenomenon is a system known as V838 Monocerotis. This is what it actually looks like. This is an actual photo of the system. And you can kind of see the star in the middle and the sort of um, really beautiful clouds um, that are around it. So we actually currently think that this is very likely um, a result of a collision of two stars. Uh, and in this case, it was probably a binary system that then became a single star. And the interesting thing about this particular phenomenon is that it's actually, well, it's a lot rarer and it's a lot more rare than you would think. Uh, a supernova is a lot more likely to occur than um, a luminous red nova because star collisions are extremely rare. They're actually not as common as you think and they don't actually happen very easily even in binary systems. So, for example, um, the closest binary to us is Alpha Centauri. The chance of those two stars colliding together, which I'm going to try to recreate in a second, is extremely, extremely low. And so let's actually see if we can maybe open up uh, Alpha Centauri here and take a look at that system as well. So in reality, Alpha Centauri A and B are really far away from each other, so the chance of them colliding is extremely low. But if they were closer together, there would be a much higher chance for them to collide. And if they did collide, we would very likely see the closest red luminous nova to us. It would be basically something like 4.2 uh, light years away from us. And so there you go. There is that uh, red luminous nova again. That has been the result of the collision of two stars. But this time, the both stars have actually kind of destroyed each other. Although we think that when these two stars collide, the excess of material does explode, but something is left in the middle. So in case of VA38, there is definitely a star in the center, and it's a relatively massive, relatively bright star as well. But I guess the next question is, so can our sun one day go red luminous uh, supernova or a red luminous nova as well? And the answer to that is, it is ridiculously unlikely, and I'll show you why. Uh, so we have a single star and it's called the sun. For a star to collide with our sun, we need to have at least 10 or possibly 100 trillion stars pass right next to us before it even has a slight chance of occurring. So let's just uh, pick a star. Let's pick, a, I don't know, Proxima Centauri, which is not too far away from us. It's a very close star to us. And we're just going to uh, throw a bunch of them at our sun and see if any one of them actually collides with us. So I'm going to throw like 30 or so. And uh, let's see what happens. So here's a bunch of them that are coming toward our sun right now. And I basically try to aim right in the middle of that little circle where our sun is. And this is just a small representation of how unlikely a collision is to occur. So for a star to collide with another star, it's if, if it's a singular star, that is, if it's a star like our sun that doesn't have a partner, the actual event is super, super ultra unlikely to occur. You're more likely to win the lottery um, 100 times in a row than for this ev event to actually occur. This is very, very, very unlikely. Um, and I've actually talked about this phenomenon previously when I did a bit of a math of uh, chance of our sun colliding with another star when Andromeda galaxy collides with our own galaxy, which will happen something like 3 or 2.5 billion years from now. And the answer to that was that it's, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. It's very unlikely. And so, yeah, but uh, here come the 30 Proxima Centauri, and if at least one of them approaches close enough to our sun, it might interact with it, but it's probably not going to collide. So for our sun to go luminous red nova, it's an event that's not going to happen. But I want to see what's going to happen to our solar system, because they are going to influence it nevertheless. But a binary star, like for example, a star where two, uh, two stars are relatively close to one another, this may occur if the gravity of both stars is uh, relatively strong. Look at these effects. So beautiful. It's like a dance of the butterflies here. Or fireflies. Or one of those creatures. Definitely looks absolutely gorgeous. So our solar system has been kind of reshuffled. But Earth, Mars, and the inner um, terrestrial planets seem to be still in the same orbit as before. Definitely not collisions though, as you can see. I can wait uh, many, many years, I can do this many, many times, but every single time the sun will come out safe and will not have a collision. And that's simply because of the amount of space in between the stars in general. So that's why it's so unlikely that a star will ever collide with another star, even in uh, trillions of years. 
So anyway, so this is not going to happen. We're going to just go ahead and uh, go into the new simulation here. Just so I can show you the only way the two stars will probably ever collide. So in this case, systems like Castor, for example, that have like six stars in there, might actually one day experience something like a red luminous nova because there's like six stars in here and even though they do have relatively stable orbits with time though it's kind of likely that maybe a bunch of them will actually decide to attract one another and collide so i've created a very unstable system right here let's see what happens maybe one of them will collide and create a red luminous nova for us and maybe it will not happen so we're just going to wait a little bit have them orbit around one another and uh, let's see what this will lead to. And there we go. There's at least one of them. Happened quite fast, actually. Uh, almost scared me, actually. And we might even see another one happening anytime soon. Because there is at least um, four more stars in there that can actually collide with one another. And I think there was another one. There's definitely something happening on the inside. So if I were to erase this supernova, I would see another one behind it. So there you go. So that's how likely it is to happen when there are stars orbiting around one another. And so anyway, so that's really all I wanted to explain in this particular video. I wanted to talk about this really interesting phenomenon known as Red Luminous Nova. So it's basically an explosion that is not like the Nova or the Supernova, but that is something that's very interesting. It's basically a collision of two stars where the um, extra material gets released into the our solar system and whatever is left creates a new star in the middle and this is something that we've seen and observed um, at least several times in the last two decades or so and we'll definitely see it again anyway thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something from this video and if you did don't forget to subscribe and possibly share this video with your friends who might also enjoy watching these videos as well don't forget to come back tomorrow for more videos and more learning and possibly just watch a video game or two i'll see you guys later game you later and as always bye bye now let's create another one of these explosions because they're so really really cool i'm going to decrease speed here and make these two stars collide with one another because why not there we go absolutely gorgeous supernova in this game have been improved dramatically and they all look so so beautiful